Hello, uh, my name is Jackie Kale. I am the Government Relations Director in Iowa for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, also known as ACS CAN. Um, I am pleased to introduce two men who have truly have Iowans' best interest at heart, Representative Hans Wills and Representative Austin Baith. <laughs> who are right over there. Um, in a time when politics is so polarizing, these two have reached across the aisle to work on reducing Iowa's high cancer incidence rates. Uh, Representative Hans Wills inherited his in, um, entrepreneurial drive from his mother and father who immigrated to the U.S. in 1954. Carl and Margaret Wills bought Ed the florist in Ottumwa in 1956. Continuing with their American dream, next came children and growing the business in many directions. Hans was the youngest of four children. Hans's mother, Margaret, passed away of cancer when he was one and a half years old. She carried him through her battle with cancer, refusing treatment while she was pregnant. Margaret became blind during the pregnancy and never got to see her son. But what but he was told of how she held him every day and stroked his hair. After her death, the German relatives came over to help Carl with the four young children and to keep the dream alive at Ed the Florist. The family collected itself and started another chapter as Carl married Doris Luzader in 1969. They needed to move on and continue life's journey. Representative Wills, says that this is the most important part of his life, the part of the story most do not know and might not ask about. This is why he and so many others look to find better ways to prevent and attack cancer. Representative Austin Baith is an internal medicine physician from Des Moines who practices both primary care and palliative care. In 2022, he was elected as a state representative for District 36 in the Iowa House of Representatives. He has since been an outspoken advocate for enacting comprehensive bipartisan legislation to help reduce cancer rates in Iowa. Welcome. Yep, yep. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, you got to turn it on. She forgot the last part. If you want to know the rest about me, just Google me because that seems to be everybody does. So if you want to know more about me, just Google me. I think that's kind of funny. I prefer Twitter. When I, <laughs> Twitter it is. When I research you, Hans. Um, hi, I'm Austin Baith. Hans Wills right here. I'm a Democrat. He's a Republican. We just got done fighting in the back alley, yeah. and we've <laughs> got out of our system. There was no winner. <laughs> we, um, we're really honored. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. We're really honored that you all have us here today, and this is something... I think the partisan gridlock that we see at the Capitol um, is frustrating for everybody under that golden dome. And uh, for me, and I think also for Hans, it's really refreshing for us to find an issue that every single person in Iowa cares about um, because everybody is affected by cancer in one way or another. And in that, that gives us, I think, hope that despite some of the political gridlock that exists in that Capitol, we're going to be able to break through and, and do some things on a state policy level to really start saving lives in Iowa. And there's no time to waste. And so a lot of our mission today, and we have, I think, 25 minutes, Hans, or, or in counting. Ish, yeah. Sometimes you got to give us a countdown. We like to talk. Um, we're going to loosely adhere to these, si these slides here. Um, but we're going to try to give you just a quick lay... Uh, a lay of the land of where we've gone so far in this last year, what our roadblocks have been, and then what you all can do to help in this mission of enacting some state policy for cancer control. And then we're going to hopefully have time left for questions. Yeah, so get a little more history, and we're going to get right to all the wonderful slides and how the state house works. Uh, 25 minutes will never be enough time to explain that. Uh, so Austin and I actually are neighbors. We sit next to each other at the state house, and that was happenstance, but it turned out to be a great thing. Um, and I told Austin when I met him, you know, obviously he knew I was a Republican, I knew he was a Democrat, but I said the letters DNR never mattered to me before I ran or even today. The only time that DNR mattered to me is when you're a doctor. 
And he just smiled at me. He goes, I am a doctor. So we hit it off, we smashingly. Uh, and we talk about every issue on the House floor. And I think it's not a rarity, but it, it certainly doesn't happen all over the House. So when we say that we're nonpartisan, we're working on things, it's, it's not just cancer. Um, it's, it's wellness. It's mental wellness. It's about our land. It's about everything we, he and I can discuss. So we just need to spread that throughout the entire state house. And I, I believe we're chipping away at it, but today we're going to give you some insight as to why certain bills that we brought to the house floor or brought to the committees last year, never saw the light of day. Now, mind you, we worked our tails off to make sure it happened, but they never saw the light of day. And some of these things that we're going to tell you today, be like, well, how do we help? And that's exactly the attitude we want you to have. And we're going to give you some of those little tuck away smart ideas of how to get a hold of us and how to get our attention. And I think that uh, Austin's going to move on slides and move on to the next. So about this time last year, I was really curious. Okay, so we've known now for nearly a year that Iowa is number two in the nation in our cancer rates, fastest rising cancer rate. And so what is our state health department doing about it? Turns out not a whole lot yet. And in I won't go into all the reasonings behind it, but a lot of what our State Department of Public Health and Human Services needs is a charge from the legislature and the money to do it to do a lot of these activities. And so I said, okay, well, that's where we can come in and we can we can write some bills, both for policy things that are outside of the control of the Department of Public Health, but also something to kind of help compel our State Department of Public Health to figure out why our cancer rates are so high. So thank you to the Iowa Cancer Consortium who has developed the Iowa Cancer Plan, an evidence-based blueprint of all the ways that we can reduce our cancer rates in Iowa. And luckily it was also signed and endorsed by our Director of Public Health and Human Services and by our governor. So I was just trying to find bills that adhere to the cancer plan that was already endorsed by our government. So I, from that cancer plan, I wrote up a, a really nerdy paper with 15 different bills that would help get to a lot of those main thrusts of our cancer plan. I went to Hans. I said, Hans, you know I'm a Democrat. I can't get anything done in this place. He didn't say it that way. He said, please, Hans, help me. There were additional expletives and... I said, Hans, take this here and see what you think about it. If there's things that you see that you we might have traction with, we're going to erase my name, put on the Will's name. Which, by the way, does not hold much weight. We're both freshmen. But it was a plan, Austin, a plan. And we went running with that. So while Hans was having bills drafted, um, this is a look at some of the things that we tried to do last year. And it falls into two buckets. One big bucket is... How do we mitigate all the known causes of cancer? How do, we, how do we lower our smoking rates? How do we lower our alcohol rates, our obesity rates? Uh, how do we do better at testing and mitigating radon? How do we prevent 14-year-olds from going to a tanning bed? So some of our bills were related to these very specific known causes of cancer and how can we mitigate those risks. And then the other bucket is basically this one bill for that one bucket is what are we missing? What, is, what are those additional unknown causes of our excess cancer rates that we're missing? And we wanted to charge the Department of Health and Human Services with the task of figuring that out by funding cancer epidemiology. So then I went to the most obvious place you need to go to make great change in this world, and that's TikTok. I found a room for him to record in. We have our own private studio upstairs at the Capitol. Knowing that I can't convince a whole lot of legislators in that Capitol to follow my lead uh, because of a letter behind my name, um, my job is to try to increase public awareness within our state so that we have constituents at the grassroots level who are calling up their state representatives and their state senators saying, hey, what the hell are you going to do about this cancer problem? And some of these would have a couple hundred thousand views, and Iowans came out of the woodwork talking about 
how everybody down their street, everybody down their road is getting cancer. And a lot of them had their suspicions of what it is. And, and that, I think, showed right there how this is something that is ready to ignite with grassroots support for action. And that's one thing that we all can start doing is to continue to spread this message that the time for action is now because every day that ticks by, there's probably an Iowan that's being diagnosed with cancer that didn't have to. And then we talk about, you know, what's going on now and what happened at the State House. we're going to keep on talking about. But as we saw some of the things, the initiatives that Austin had put together and we'd all agreed, these are the way, this is the way to go. Start hitting roadblocks and barriers. Um, things that made perfect sense to me. Uh, I ran a radon bill and uh, I'll give you a little background on that. You know, it's like you have to go out and talk to the, the home builders and to other people that are in the industry to see how they feel about it. They're constituents, so I think that's the right thing to do. I went and talked to them, and it took a while, but they were all against it. I'm like, wait, what? How, how can you be against something that sounds this simple and this easy to do, and it's a small cost, you know, considering you're going to save lives? And they said, we don't like mandates. I said, oh, so we'll call it something else then. So we're figuring out what to call things, but I spent enough time with the home builders, and I convinced them this is a really good idea. And they said, you know, Hans, honestly, 90% of us already do that. I said, well, why don't you put that on a pedestal and make it positive? The 10% that don't are the ones we're after. So let's let's put this mandate in place. And they all agreed to it. And the lobbyists and everybody else couldn't believe that these guys were going to let us run this bill. And I went and talked to the senators, and they said, yep, we if you get the lobby to do it and you get the, uh, the groups to do it, then we're going to do it. So we actually got one to where we thought was going to be the finish line. Got it all the way over the Senate, went through subcommittee, did the whole process. If you don't know that, watch Schoolhouse Rock. Some of you are probably too. I've got a slide up here, Hans. It shows all the various so this is the good hurdles you got to go. We, we passed through four hurdles with that bill, Hans. Yes. That's not so, bad. No, and it was amazing. And once we got it done, I thought it was a done deal. And they started talking about trading horses, which I had no idea what they were talking about. But I thought I'd have some fun. I told the speaker, I've got my trailer outside. I have a nag and a filly. Which one do I need today? Because apparently something else has to happen for this to happen. Long story short, our friends in the Iowa Senate, yeah, our friends in the Iowa Senate, decided not to bring it to the floor at all. And I went over and I grabbed the two senators who had promised me that that would happen. And they said, hey, that's not our decision because the leaders determine what comes to the floor. And I said, did you go advocate for it? Can I come advocate for it? Which is unheard of. But I went over to the Senate and I talked to the leadership. I talked to Charlie. I talked to Jack. I said, why can't we get to this floor? Why can't we not get this to the floor? And they were, they were very kind, but there's a lot of other things going on, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, we had everybody agreed. We we crossed all the hurdles on the house, and it wouldn't go to the Senate floor. We could really do nothing about it. And we're going to get into talking about some of the barriers for action within that chamber. I think if we look to be very serious here, that quite sadly, more members of our state legislature are battling cancer now. Correct. And especially on the Senate side. And so I think as more and more people have this in-your-face reminder that this can happen to you. And that's what we learned. That's what the data is. And actually, in persuasive argument is once you get somebody to realize, you know, this could be you, you start to get them to actually change their mind. So the results of Hans's really hard work was, it was a good start. <laughs> They say it takes, on average, like three to five years for a bill to become law. And so in year one, I actually am pretty encouraged that we got pretty far in the way. I was, cr I was crushed. I, I was told crushed. Austin, we had, no, we had nine bills. I'm, he's like, how many, you, how many of these do you think we'll actually get through? I'm very optimistic, and I'm a salesperson by nature. I said, well, at least seven. <laughs> he just looked at me, seven? I can't wait till you're in the minority party. <laughs> All right, so let's. <laughs> that was good. Let's talk about barriers to the legislative process here, and we're we're running low on time. In seven minutes, so I think here's one of the biggest problems. Fair. There are so many problems out there in this state that need to be fixed, and so little time. The legislature meets. 
for four months out of the year. We actually only have a few weeks to write and debate bills. Right. And so, and there's only, you know, 150 of us under that dome. And so, you, the, an issue has to make it to the top of the totem pole in importance. And again, that's where everybody here comes into play. Um, and then, you know, one party more than another is a little bit shy about spending money and raising taxes to pay for it. What? Even if it's for a really good cause like saving human life. Goes both ways, Dawson. I got it goes both ways. We work hard on every direction at the state house, but getting back to some of the barriers, not just me or a party, but we talked about this. <laughs> we've got we've got two we, we went at it very aggressively. And we took a bunch of really great ideas that made a lot of sense from a study that was out there that everybody agreed with. Our governor, our director, heck, everybody got to read it. But we didn't think, maybe too aggressively, that I thought we'd get them all through. The truth of the matter is we can't. It's going to take a while. So we know that we need to get back together right now and say, what are the top three issues we can get together on that affect all of us, even though we know cancer affects all of us? What are the three issues we can get together on and use you guys to give us help? Because the other barrier you're going to have is you guys can push yes on a form letter all you want to, and I will give that about as much time as you gave it when you push that button. It comes to my desk. I don't read them. Send a personal note. Send three lines. Make a personal phone call. Make it real. Make it genuine. Because that's the way you get a hold of a legislator. Now, if they're not returning your phone calls or your emails when they're personal, I hate to say, let me know. Because I'll call them out. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. So make your ask personal. And when we get together with a group of y'all and decide what those three really main topics are, then we're going to pass it out to everybody. But don't tell the same story. Tell yours. Because that's what a constituent's supposed to do with their legislator. See, I wrote this slide, but you adhered to this pretty well. Did I really? So I couldn't highlight that enough is be personal. If it's three sentences, it's way better than, you know, the same thing everybody else said. Um, calling in or going in person or sending an email is really important. I think it's important to identify if you're a constituent. Legislators really tend to listen more to somebody who lives in the area they represent. Absolutely. And that's going to be something that we ask of you all. We're going to have an action slide. The next one is ways for you to sign up. And one of the important things that we will do is match you with your state legislator, your state senator, to be able to call them with this specific ask. And that goes a really long way. Um, and then, yes, we'll have some specific bills, hopefully soon, where we can give you that specific ask. Um, Hans, I wanted to back up to the strategy. Um, All right. I'm good with it. What's our strategy? No, never mind. Okay. We have pretty much covered that all. So here's the action item. So um, I want to I wanna really thank... Um, the American Cancer Society and the Cancer Action Network that Jackie Hale and her group uh, um, helps to head up, Jackie Kale. And um, also the Iowa Cancer Consortium does a great job connecting everybody. And I so thank you all for being, I presume you're all part of the Iowa Cancer Consortium. That's why you're here. If you're not, you're somehow uh, sneaking in. They had a very good lunch, so I, that might have something to do with it. And then I am keeping a form. This last one and if, is, I know it's a really long address, but if you have get access to the notes, I'm going to keep a form. So if any of you want direct contact with me, I will let you know who you need to talk to and when and let you in on what we are doing. And we hope to build this coalition of folks who can start reaching out and raising the awareness and then talking to people in charge to get this thing done. And one thing I want to get out there too, I mean, as I got involved with this, um, it falls on your plate sometimes. You get lucky. The IJAG group back in the time of high school reached out to me about two weeks ago and said, hey, Hans, we want to do this big, huge fundraiser. They had the name, they had everything lined up, and it was going to be for childhood cancer. I said, well, that's my honey hole. And they're like, what? I said, I'm going to call, make a couple phone calls. I called Dr. Dickens up at the University of Iowa. He got involved with the group. The kids got fired up. I said, well, Dr. Wiener would probably talk to you as well. We haven't called you yet. We're going to. Um, just a heads up. But Dr. Dickens is going to come down during halftime. But my point is we're engaging the youth. 
to get involved in this mission as well. And they're going to take their program that they build to all the other high schools in Iowa that have IJAG programs, which is a ton, because we need the next generation to be as vocal and knowledgeable about the situation and to actually raise private money and funds because the state government doesn't always have the kind of money we need, so we need to keep that moving forward with private donations as well and getting our youth involved. So I just want to get that out there. And we have 60 seconds for questions. <laughs> that ain't bad. It's pretty good, actually. We can go over it by hours, usually. Any questions, folks? How about now? Okay, yes. great. So so I want to thank you. So I'm I'm not a constituent. I'm, I guess, maybe one of the only non-Iowans here. I was an Iowan. Uh, I'm Kim Rathbaum, I'm the director of the National Cancer Institute. And I want to say first, um, it's so important to realize that it's a bipartisan issue. No, everybody wants this to be better. And so I really appreciate what you're doing. But I, I'm here, one, because I love Iowa, but two, because it really bothers me that it's number two for cancer and getting worse. And so... This, this is a, an urgency that needs to be addressed. I hear it in what you're saying. One of the things that I've really taken to heart is when we d design clinical trials that they can't take three years to design, four more years to accrue, because nobody has time to wait. And I would encourage you to feel the same way, that three years to get a bill like this passed when it's so obvious um, really is too long, and there are too many patients who will lose their battles to cancer waiting for this to move forward. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you very much. Yeah. I I can't think of many other issues that come before us in which there is this much urgency. You know, in which human so many human lives are at stake. I mean, when I did a calculation last year, it's something like an excess of fourteen hundred extra cancer diagnoses in this state. In the state. If we compared if we were average. That's a lot of islands. This is the wrong podium to be on. You don't want to finish first in this category. <laughs> So you said you would um, personally talk to people who don't return your emails. Derek Wolf is my representative, and he has never, ever responded to any of my emails. <laughs> Offer know. him cookies. <laughs> Try that. I'll give you his cell phone number. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I would like it, please. A yeah, we all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm serious when I say that because... I brought it up to the, to the caucus before. I go, you guys need to be returning people's phone calls, emails, not form letters, but that's that's part of our job. And I can't force him to do anything. But I know that's part of my mission. I know Austin does it. Um, and honestly, I learn more from those things, quite honestly, than I do from a lot of our legislators. And in fact, I do all of them almost, all of them, except for Austin. I'm trying to get back in your good graces. Any other questions? One final question? Can we have one more? Is that okay? No, you want us out of here? I don't blame you. <laughs> Dr. Cole Morgan. Uh, as you may know, as a surgeon, I'm not very patient. And as Dr. Rathmill said, it's we need to be impatient for our patients. So instead of taking a shotgun approach to eight or nine or 10 or 15 bills, can you help us prioritize something to get done? And really, let's focus the action so something really happens. So there's so much talk, but it's time to act. So we take your leadership on what's going to get over the hurdles, and let's, as a group, push it forward. I yes. think that's well said. And, and Hans and I haven't yet had a sit down yet, um, Dan, for exactly our strategy. But I think we have to be, we have to look at what's going to be most effective and match that with what's going to be most likely to actually pass. So it may not be the most effective policy because it doesn't have a chance of passing in this current legislature. Um, I think we need to invest in more research, and that's not going to get us immediately to the answer. But then I think also what we can do that can get us more quickly to turning things around is radon detection and mitigation. Um, one in 15 homes have been tested for radon in the last decade. I mean, we can do much, much better. Yet 70% of homes have an elevated radon rate. So things like that, I think, are actually low-hanging fruit that don't have a whole lot of political opposition that we can start focusing on. But we're going to be in communication with everybody. We're going to get as many stakeholders together as possible so we can come up with you know a top three list we try to get done this year. And, and to Austin's point in this up, I mean, we want to find a home run. 
and I believe it's going to be right on because we've done a lot of the work and we were that close. We need to get a home run so then we can get that into the so, to the medias, the social medias that we've started. We've won our first battle, and the next two are coming down the pipe because we have to have a champion out there so we can get some press. That's all there is to it. I mean, social media press, and then y'all are great advocates for all this. One more. <clears throat> All right. Hi, I'm Tracy McCausland. I live in Waterloo. I'm a seven-year breast cancer survivor. I believe Dr. Fadke is here. Right here, Dr. Fadke at UIHC. So her work as an oncologist saved my life, and that's her main job to do. And she did it, and she keeps doing it. So thank you, Dr. Fadke. I appreciate the two of you standing on stage and bantering and um, everyone could understand, you know, the points you're making. It was great. It was, it was good. I appreciate you serving. I really do. Um, Christine Carpenter is the person who's taught me how to um, be an advocate. And I worked with her with the National Breast Cancer Coalition and she taught me in Washington, D.C. You said as a kid, you learned that we could walk the halls of Congress, right, Christine? And the one thing that she always taught us as advocates, and she's been doing this since her mid-40s, so how many years? <laughs> About 30 years of her life that she's dedicated to cancer advocacy. You know what? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really inspiring, and I've learned a lot. Um, I don't think I'm a member of the Cancer consor Consortium, but I'm on the board for the American Cancer Society. I got your emails. I like to learn, so I came today. But to be honest, this is infuriating. <laughs> um, and you know this as well. It's just like there's work to be done, and there's people in the room that are doing good work every day. And, I mean, I'm here because I like to learn, and um, I can afford to be here because my husband's working. And now he's picked, taking my kid after school, so my high schooler gets to golf with his buddies, right? Like, I mean, I got it good because I could just drive to Ankeny and, and learn. And, you know, I mean, what is it going to take for people to go head-to-head -head on cancer? And, you know, in Iowa, we like to win, and now we're famous because everyone knows Kaylin Clark, but, like, come on. I mean, I think people need to answer I, to answer for not getting things done for things on cancer. So <laughs> here's my question. For people that are dragging their feet in the House and the Senate in Iowa, what is their answer? I mean, you are great communicators to all of us, but what is what is their answer that we're not just pedal to the metal, that we're second in the state for the highest <laughs> new new cancer incurrences. I, it doesn't, I mean, people, my background's in HR, like people get fired for not doing these things. So I guess I'm just curious. I, that's a fair question. And I'll say there's some answers that, you know, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you want to hear them, but what I want to happen ask, you know, for appropriations, because they're different when you go through policy or pro money or policy. I went and asked for money. I said, hey, we need money for research, Epi epidem epidemiology, figure out why I was here. And it got sent to appropriations. I got a chance to talk to them. But the answer was, we give them a lot of money right now. And I, I thought that, oh, yes, we do. We appropriate money. But we give them a lot of money is not the answer I was looking for, nor is it with the answer I should have gotten. It should have been, what's the need? I believe we asked for $100 million. It was close or something. It was a lot of money. But we asked for it, and the answer was we already give them money. That's not acceptable. So when you ask, you know, our frustration is the same. And when it comes to policy, it's the same. But, you know, fire them, you know, yeah, who do you fire? There's a new hiring and firing round coming November 5th. <laughs> You have an opportunity every two to six years, depending on the office. Two to four years, rather, in this thing. So um, I think you bring up a great point. And I think until action on cancer becomes a top election issue, which it really should be in this state, if any state in the nation, it should be this state. That, I think, is our charge, this becoming an election issue. Because 
every single politician is self-interested. Every human self-interested, but a politician wants to get reelected. And if they think whether their reelection hinges on action on cancer, you're going to see some results. Very good point. I think our time's up. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thank Appreciate you. It. What? Don't so lose hope. You're going to get there. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you to both of you. Um, as somebody who was up at the Capitol last year, I could feel the energy around this issue. So I really, really appreciate what you guys are doing and bringing up at the State House. So thank you so, so much. And I believe you're both going to hang out outside maybe if you do want to yeah. talk to either Representative Baith or Wills. They will be hanging out in the lobby for a little bit if you have any specific questions.